All right, guys, what is up? Here we are in Tuner Studio 3.1. Um, so you can see this is registered to me. Um, I believe you can use the free version for a few things, um, but I would just go ahead and register it. I believe it's $100, um, but I think it's definitely worth it for what this uh, software can do, so I would definitely recommend it. Um, so if you're first starting out, what you're going to go ahead and do is create a new project. Um, you're going to click on it. You can go ahead and name it anything you want. Um, you can put it in a different directory if you really want it. I would just leave it there. And then you're going to want to go ahead and detect your firmware. Um, uh, this You have to have your ECU plugged in, and I don't have my ECU plugged in right now. I'm at my desk. Um, so you go ahead and click that, and then it would do this, you know, and then pull up and it'd say right here. It'd be like, this is detected. You click on it and accept. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is just open the last tune that I had. Um, and so this is your main dashboard right in here. Um, so this is going to show you all of your, um, the most important stuff at least. Um, and you can see it's not connected because I don't have my computer connected. But when it is connected, um, it would actually show all of these things in live tune. Um, and one other thing to see, if you go to this all the way down to real-time display, this is the second one with all of these um, live values. And this is also very helpful, um, specifically for your engine map, the manifold air pressure, um, the air temperature, and then uh, the coolant temperature right here, so these three. Uh, you want to make sure that when you first turn on your car, when it's really cold, your engine map, if you're around sea level, is about, um, I want to say it's supposed to be around 100 kilopascals, um, but if you're closer to my elevation, which was 3,000 feet, I believe, what you guys can Google the elevation of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and um, I was actually around 85 kilopascals. Um, so as long as you're kind of in between there based on your elevation, you should be roughly good. Um, and then also manifold air temperature, you want to make sure that this is roughly equal to what your coolant temperature is. It really shouldn't be much different, um, at least when you very first start. You know, once you start going, then it'll be different. But let's go ahead and close this off. Um, and what we're going to go ahead and do um, is you're going to go ahead and load tune. And then you're going to load the base tune that you have that came with your ECU. Um, for me, I already have this tune, so I'm not going to change it at all because that would be bad. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, and once you've loaded your tune, let's go up here into the basic settings. We'll go to the very first one, engine and sequential. So we're going to go ahead down here, make sure the engine size is 2960. You're going to change your injectors to whatever your injector size is. Um, this all looks good. We're going to do fully sequential. Um, you should leave all that, and then this should all be the same in the base tune. Um, and then the one last thing that we're going to go ahead and do is click required fuel. And then, so this is going to be the same, this is going to be the same. And then right here on the base tune, mine was tuned for E85. Um, so you need to change this to 14.7 because I believe E85 wants to be 9.8 and that is very high. And so once you click OK, it's going to readjust this number right here. For me, it is 6. But it's going to change based on your injector value and the uh, ideal stoichiometric ratio that you put in. So let's go ahead, and if you were on your car, you'd go ahead and burn that to the ECU, because this is something you definitely want to save. We'll close that out. We'll come up here again to general settings. We're going to just go ahead and make sure all of these are good. Um, so we want speed density. If you have a map sensor, you can change it to MAF if you're using a MAF or different stuff like that. Um, again, here's your stoichiometric AFR. You want to make sure that's 14.7. Um, pretty much all of this is good. And then this right here is just if you want to view the tables in coolant, or so the coolant tables in Fahrenheit or Celsius. I prefer uh, Celsius, even though it keeps switching back to Fahrenheit for some reason. Um, but you can see right here, this is a Celsius gauge, and so I'm happy with that. Um, everything else here looks good. We'll go ahead and close that out. Go back up here again. Um, rev limiter, we're going to go ahead, and you can see you can do a coolant based rev limit. Um, so I have 3,000 RPM and when it's really cold out, and then it slowly comes up to 6,500. Um, I think 6,000 is the original red line for these cars, um, but these cars can't actually rev higher. You just end up getting valve float. Um, so if you get the right valves and everything, you can actually rev up to 8,000. Um, but I did 6,500 just to be sure, and then you just you watch your dashboard, you know, and you can also change this down if you don't want to watch your dashboard, but that's up to you. Um, you don't really need most of this. I believe this is actually disabled upon um, the initial. I want to say that this is normal, and so that doesn't, that disables all of this, yeah. So I leave this on CLT because it's going to go ahead and give me the coolant-based temperature revs. 
go ahead and close that out. You don't really need it. Um, you can leave it as is. Uh, I don't think you have anything in here that you need. Go ahead and close that out. And then the tack output, don't need it. Fan control, if you have the ECU controlling your fans, you'd use that. Um, everything here should be good. Let's go to MAF settings. Um, so this would be if you have a MAF, but I don't have a MAF, so I really can't tell you how much or what values to put here. Um, so talk to Felix if you bought your kit through him. Um, Real-time display, again, that's what we can see everything through. And then we don't really need anything else here, so it's perfect. Um, let's go over to fuel settings. We're going to go ahead and open the injector dead time. Um, so these, you're going to leave them all the same because your injectors are all the same. <laughs> so um, for me, I'm using 0.9 uh, milliseconds. I don't know how that compares, but most of them are around 0 0.9, 0 0.75 to 0.9. Um, so I just left it there. And the tune for you feature kind of helps with that as well. We'll close that out, open this up again. Um, we don't really need that. We don't need really this or this. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is come down to the fuel VE table one. Click on that. So this is your fuel table. Um, this is going to be what controls at what RPM and at what load does your, or how much fuel will it put in for that um, specific value. And this is going to be something we're going to deal with when we start the car, um, but we're not there yet. And just wanted to get you acquainted with it. Um, this button will raise it up um, just like a, a single increment, down a single increment, and then this is a specified value. So if I chose this right here, I could raise it up, and you see it went up by 0.1, down by 0.1, and then I could do up by one whole number, and now it's up by one whole number, or obviously down by one whole number. Boom, just like that. We'll go ahead and close that out, we don't need it. And I think that is pretty much everything in here. Uh, fuel pump and pressure, you can use this if you want. You know, um, if you have a fuel pressure sensor, you can use set that up in here. Uh, but we don't have that right now. And then I believe flex fuel might measure temperature or something. We'll close that out. We don't need it. Let's go over to ignition. We're going to open the ignition options and wheel decoder. We want to make sure this is on toothed wheel. And then all of this pretty much you don't really need. Um, this should all be just set in the base tune. One thing you will need to do right here, the fixed advance. Um, so when you first go to start your car um, you need to go ahead and actually make sure the timing is correct so if you guys remember in the third video i believe at the end of the third video um, the last one we went ahead and replaced the cast disc and i talked about it at the beginning of this video we need to go ahead and actually move the distributor um, in order to make sure that this is okay so we're going to go ahead and click fixed timing and then right here we're going to set it to either zero or ten and then you're going to actually pull the fuel pump fuse so you're not spraying any fuel and you're going to turn your car over while somebody shoots it with a timing light and you're going to look on the main crank and if you guys don't know any about this timing stuff go ahead and watch my video how to time your car because um, that is very important that we get the timing correct because when you click it onto the fixed advance right here it's not going to change the timing advance based on RPMs like a normal car would um, so this is going to just fire whenever it's at the 10 degree mark or the 0 degree mark right here um, so once we get this, once we get the mark and the timing right dead on, then we know that forever in the future, our car is always going to be electronically timed perfectly. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and just use this. You can go ahead and turn the car over, make sure it's timed. And then once you're done, make sure to set it back to use table. And then this is pretty much all good for that. Close that out. Uh, I believe um, you could do a cold advance if you want. Um, don't really mess with the ignition table again. Timing is something that will make power, but it all is also something that will break your car. So I definitely wouldn't recommend um, doing that unless you're a tuner. Now, one more thing we're going to do real quick is go up to tools and we're going to calibrate map slash barometer. And this is if you're using a speed density sensor like I am, um, you're going to go up here and actually select your map sensor. So there's a, just a list of common ones right here. And I believe you can use a custom yeah, right there if you really wanted. I have the GM three bar. I bought this from DIY Auto Tune. Um, but when I first bought this, I bought a sensor off Rock Auto. It was like a 93 Chevy pickup or something. Um, and it actually turned out to be a GM one bar. And that is fine for most applications. Um, but I am running 20 ish pounds of boost. At least that's what Mega Squirt tells me I am. Um, and so 20 pounds is right around two bars, I believe. Um, so if I used a one bar map sensor on my car running 20 pounds, it would max out 
and it would not be a happy day. I would probably explode my engine. So you're gonna go ahead and change it to whatever your uh, correct map sensor is, and you're gonna change the barometer. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have a barometer, um, I believe, um, but you're gonna change it just in case. And one way to check how the changes are going is in the real-time display. You'll see the engine map actually change um, as you change this. So if I went ahead and stuck this up to the one bar, you would see the map instead of being 85, now it's at like 160 or something. Um, and then if I changed it back to a three bar, it would go back down to 85. Um, so you'd be able to physically see what the engine is saying the temper or the current pressure is. But once you have this all set correctly, um, you should be fine. Go ahead and close that out, or actually I would burn that menu again because that is an important menu. Um, and once you, any of these buttons that you click burn, it click it saves everything that you've done. Um, so if you had changed with the uh, fuel table, but you didn't want to save the fuel table, but then you went and burned it later, you just burned on that fuel table. So always remember, anything that you burn, it saved everything that you're currently set up in uh, Tuner Studio as. Uh, last thing that we're going to go ahead and do is start up an idle. Um, the cranking startup settings, cranking RPM, I believe it's actually 200 for our cars. Um, that's what I found when I was cranking it over and I just didn't have any uh, fuel pressure in it. Um, I was seeing about 200 on the RPM. Uh, I could just watch it. I have it set to 400. Basically what this means is below 400 RPMs, it kicks in the cranking uh, fueling table and, oh, excuse me, and the timing table for cranking as well. Um, so if you put this too high, you'll actually run into some issues. Um, I think 400 is fine for the moment. Um, you know, you can set it to 200 and you shouldn't have any problems. You could set it to 300 and you shouldn't have any problems. Um, the second thing here is flood clear. Um, so this is a 70% throttle. So this means if you push the throttle all the way down um, while you crank it, it's actually not going to inject any fuel. And this is very helpful because it means if you accidentally foul your plugs out or something, or you think you just have way too much fuel in the chamber, you can go ahead and push the throttle all the way down past 70% and crank it over, and it's not going to inject any fuel, and it's gonna help air out those cylinders by kind of sucking in fresh air and putting out the old fouled air that we have in there. So that is very helpful if you need it. Um, I believe it's just like that from the factory. Um, you don't really need any of the rest of this stuff. We'll go ahead and close that out. Priming pulse, this has been this is something that actually I found was very helpful for getting my car to start properly. Um, so basically what this means is when you first turn the key into the on position, it actually sprays a 13.1 millisecond, 12.7 or whatever, 8.3 millisecond pulse of fuel into the injection or into the uh, upper intake manifold. Or sorry, the lower intake manifold technically. And what this does is it actually helps kind of get just a little bit of gas in the chamber. Um, so when you actually do start cranking, you have a rich mixture that's already getting ready to be pulled in to the cylinder, as opposed to if you didn't have anything here, you would start uh, cranking it over and then it would finally start injecting fuel. Um, so this actually helps it just get that nice crank right, o right over um, when you turn the key and it just fires right up. Um, so this is something that is helpful and by all means, this right here is not a perfect um, map. I'm still having a little bit issue when it's cold. I think I have to raise these values a little bit. Um, but I'm also having a problem with leaking fuel pressure. So I don't know if that's leaking out of the pump or leaking out of the fuel pressure regulator I have. Um, so I do actually have a check valve I'm gonna be getting here soon. I'm gonna install that in the pump um, and then hopefully it will hold pressure because then that means that the fuel pressure regulator would be bad if it doesn't anymore. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have this because currently what I have to do is turn the key into the on position wait for the fuel pump to actually prime the entire system. I can hear when it actually gets to full pressure. And then I turn the key off and then turn the key on again. And now that has fuel pressure and it sprays in for the correct value, then it starts. Um, so I'm waiting for that check valve to go ahead and just kind of finalize this. Um, but I will go ahead and upload the newest version of this map whenever I have onto my website, just for you guys. Um, and there should be a whole new tab for Megasquirt. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. So this is just uh, just is just that important thing, and it kind of tells you your coolant too. And one thing to note, when you guys have your car connected, it'll actually show a little line, say you're at 60 degrees Celsius. It'll say like right here is where I'm pulling data from, or if you're like 50, it'll pull data from right here. It'll show you where you are in this curve, just a little tad of information. Um, back to the startup, 
you have a cranking pulse. So this is how much it's going to actually increase during cranking. Um, again, I don't think this curve is correct. Um, this is just, I spent a lot of time trying to get my car to crank over um, and actually fire up on the first crank. And this is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, so by all, all means, it's not the perfect one. You can see it says most engines need 200 to 400% um, when cold and near 100% when hot. Um, and I'm down to 27. So this is not a perfect curve right here. Um, so I definitely need to do some more work with this. Um, but that is just when you're cranking the car over, when it's under that limit, 400 RPMs, it's going to be injecting extra fuel. And then this is how much extra fuel it injects based on the coolant temperature. Go ahead and close that out. Come back up here again. Uh, um, after start enrichment and warm up enrichment, they're kind of the same thing um, from what I can tell. I think after start only does for a few seconds. It's just as immediately after the engine has started, it's normal to need additional fuel. Um, so it says 50% cold to 5% warm. So you can see I have a rough uh, fuel map in here. And this isn't perfect again. <laughs> uh, you can see it looks really weird. Um, but this is what is currently working for my car. And then finally for the warm up, um, it says typical maximum is around 255 cold and then 100% in the final row. And that's because when we get our cars actually, um, their thermostats are built, the stock thermostats are built to open at about 80 degrees Celsius. Um, so right here, 75 is really close. That means at 75.5 or greater, it's not going to inject any additional fuel. Um, so anything below this, it's gonna go ahead and inject additional fuel because when you're really cold, you actually want to be really rich because um, lean combustion mixtures, they need you need more rich fuel to warm up the engine correctly. Um, and if you leave it leaner, you're gonna have problems with a lot of stuff. Um, so you need this nice kind of curve. Um, again, this probably isn't perfect, but it is what is working. Close that out. Uh, idle control, if you have an idle control valve still. Um, air conditioning idle up. I don't have that set up yet, but when I do, I'll go ahead and make something for this. Um, and then an idle table tells you how much to do based on where you are. Now, pretty much the rest of this stuff you don't really need, but let me go ahead and tell you one very important thing right now. We're gonna click this and we're gonna come down here to the output test mode injector slash spark. So this is how we're going to be testing our injector coils, or sorry, our coils and our injectors. Um, so in a normal car, when you're hooked up to your ECU, you're gonna be able to enable test mode. You'll click on that. You can turn fuel pump off. Um, and then for the coil testing, we're gonna go ahead and do one you want one. You're gonna choose coil A through F, which is one through six, A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, and then remember it's alternating from side to side. So if you choose coil A, then coil one is gonna spark. Um, you'll go ahead and click start, and you'll actually be able to hear the, uh, the coil going click, 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 click on this output interval, so you can make it larger if you wanted. Um, and you can also plug in a spark plug or anything to see for timing um, if you wanted. So just gonna, and we're gonna go ahead and use that for all of them. Make sure every single coil is firing because then that means that you're completely good. Um, when I was having an issue with the wiring, I wired it wrong, um, coil A would fire, um, but then coil B, it would fire coil A at half the speed. Coil C would fire coil A at half of that half speed um, and all the way up to F. So coil one would only ever spark. I could never get the rest of these to spark for some reason. Um, and it was because it was all wired wrong um, and it was just very unhappy. Um, same thing with the injectors. You can go ahead and test them as well. You would put it onto one, um, not, uh, you, you don't want to use sequence. I don't know what the reason for that is, but that's the one that you have to do. Um, and this is going to be the same thing. You can select injector A and you can say, I want, you know, 50 injections. And what it's going to do is with the fuel pump off, of course, um, it's going to go ahead and click the injector 50 times and you'll actually be able to watch down here It'll say it'll count down from 50 um, to 0 um, And so you can listen to your injector actually clicking on and off So you want to go ahead and make sure all of your injectors are also working. Those are ground triggered um, So if you guys remember when we wire them up, you have to give them a positive switched 12 volt to one wire and then to the ECU on the other wire because the ECU actually grounds that pin this is a very helpful thing just to make sure that your injectors and coils are working. Um, and if it's not working in this, it's not going to work when it runs. Um, so just make sure that this works first. 
we'll go ahead and close that out. Um, I don't think there's anything else in here that I used. Um, injector sequential testing, I've never used that. Um, I've never used any of this either. So we'll go ahead and just close that out and say it's, a, say it's done. All right, last thing, um, diagnostic and high-speed logger. Um, so if you guys remember the pictures I gave earlier, um, this is going to show you your cam. Um, so there's going to be a green and a blue signal. And so when you crank it or the engine is running, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and see clear um, signals on both the blue and the green. You're not gonna to want it to be really jumpy um, or anything, because that means they're getting a bad signal. Um, it's supposed to be, I wanna say 10 blue spikes for every one green spike. Um, and for mine, it's a little bit weird versus the picture I showed you of what it's supposed to be. Instead of having a short green, it's actually got a long green. Um, but that doesn't necessarily matter because you just measure at the very beginning. Um, so as long as you're getting consistent readings um, and it's not kind of jumping all around, you should be fine. Um, so that is the last thing you need to double check in order to make sure your car is ready to fire. Um, and then you should be good. Um, what I did is um, when I got my car running, you would go ahead and check the wideband and then just go ahead and go into the fuel table. And I just selected everything. And I said, you know, let me go ahead and pull it down. It's really rich right now. It's at 11. I'm going to pull it down by 10. I pulled it down by 10 and now it's at 12.3. Like, and so I pulled it down by another 10 until I got to where I needed to be. Um, and then once I was there, um, at least the car was in a general range of where it should be, I would come over to Tune Analyze for you. And this is the um, Tuner Studio Tune for You feature. It's an additional $60. Um, but again, I think this is really worth it because it's going to just, you. so what you're actually going to do is in the fuel settings, you're going to come over to this AFR table and say, at these loads here, this is what I want my air fuel ratio to look like. Um, so you do have to have a wide band piped into this in order for it to work. Um, but you can see right up here is where I cruise on the highway and I want it a little bit leaner around 15. Um, but down here, this is around idle. I went around 14.7 um, and then up here is all kind of in boost because um, this is remember this is our map right here so anything above um, like this area here is going to be in boost um, so we're going to go ahead and richen that up to where it needs to be 11.5 to 11 is like the perfect area for like high boost applications so you can see all that in here is all 11 and then of course we kind of round it down a little bit as we come along here I went ahead and actually made this myself. Um, the original map that came with this tune uh, has a lot of 13.5s. Um, and then up here it gets into the 11s and 12s. And then up here it actually even got into like the 10.5s. Um, so I made this whole thing myself because I didn't want an overly rich tune, which it was giving me before. I wanted it to be a very nice street tune that was good on gas um, and it gave me pretty good uh, fuel to air ratios. So this is, you're gonna have to make it yourself. You can even just straight up copy mine if you want, because this is a very decent one. Um, it's not perfect right here. I think this is a, um, <laughs> I think it's, this is a mixed calculation. I think that should be 14, uh, it's probably 14.2, because um, you can see this is 14.2, that's 14.2, that's 14.2, and that's 14. Um, so I think this, I messed up right there. Um, but 13.7 is not that far off from 14.2. Um, so it's not the worst thing in the world, and that's richer rather than leaner. Um, but you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that this is all kind of where you need it to be. And once you do that, you go ahead and just click Start Auto-Tune. And what it does is it knows where you are on this map. And it says, okay, I'm right here, and I should be at 14.2 AFR, and I'm at 15.2. Well, I'm going to go ahead and now increase the fueling. In, and this is your fuel VE1 table, if you guys didn't realize that. Um, this right here, the fuel VE table 1, sorry. Um, and it's actually going to change these values for you. Um, so as you drive, it's going to go ahead and just kind of change and fill out this entire map. Um, so you're going to go ahead and take it slow at first and just kind of get these base values in here really well taken care of. And then you're going to start pushing it into boost, pushing it into boost at different RPMs. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and do first gear. You know, first gear is going to stay really low. It's going to be down here um, because there's not going to be a lot of boost running through it. Second gear, it's actually going to start pulling a lot more into here because you're going to get a lot more load. Third gear, fourth gear, and you're going to fill out this table as best you can. And what this is going to do is it's going to just fine tune your map. And you're going to want to go ahead and 
drive the entire range of whatever you're always going to be driving. Um, so actually right here you can see is a pretty hard line at 4900 RPMs between this 70 and this 105. And that is actually because I don't ever really drive my car over 4500 RPMs. Um, so right here this actually hasn't been tuned. Um, I don't want to push my car too hard and have it explode on me. Um, so I usually shift around 4,000, which is why right here has been kind of changed. And then all the way up here, you can see it's actually a nice fade um, between these two sections here, but it's a very hard jump right here. And that's because I've never gotten up high enough for it to tune this down for me. So if I was actually to do this, um, I would probably say these should be in the 80s um, at the maximum just because you're getting so many 70s and 60s in here. Um, 100 is extremely, extremely rich, um, but that is okay. I'd rather have it rich in a cell that I never use than lean in a cell that I never use. Um, so all of this is just kind of um, untuned at the moment. And when I do put this car on a dyno, I'm gonna actually have them run through everything. So we'll see all the way up to like at least 6,000. Um, and then I think 200, 270 is around um, the 20 pounds that I'm running right now. So we should see almost this whole section here filled in correctly um, once it's on a dyno. And you don't use an auto-tune on a dyno, it's what you're paying the dyno person for. Um, but I guess you could if you really wanted to. Um, but supposedly this auto-tune does leave a lot on the table. Um, so it's not the perfect thing in the world, but it is a safe map. Um, so everything in here is where it needs to be. Um, so this is pretty much it guys. This should get you all the way to where you need to be in order to tune your car and get it running. Um, this auto tune will get you driving. Um, I always do recommend taking it to a tuner if you're really going for a lot of power. Um, I'm going to be taking mine to a tuner. Um, I need to actually install a clutch first because it is actually just, it's ripping the clutch. You can hear it. Um, but it is, it has been very good. Mega Squirt is just incredibly more powerful for some reason. Um, just like the, the car is more powerful with Mega Squirt running it than it was in Iztune. Um, I don't know if it's the coil on plugs. I don't know if it's sequential ignition or sequential uh, injectors or anything. Um, but it is running really, really well. It revs really, really well. And I'm very happy with it. Um, so even though I've run into a lot of problems to get here um, with the wiring and the crank angle sensor not reading correctly, I am very ecstatic um, that it runs as well as it does. Um, even though I have some issues with the startup still, and you saw those cranking tables, they looked crazy. Um, even though I still have those problems, um, it still runs better than it did with uh, the Niztune. Um, so I highly recommend this. If you guys are looking into this, go ahead and drop comments down below for any questions you have. Um, this can control things like uh, the boost controller. Um, I don't know what much of this is for. Um, but it does have so many extra pins in the ECU you use. Um, I do have flex fuel ready for this. I haven't quite put up the fuel sensor in the uh, fuel lines yet. You have to go ahead and cut some lines up for that and I haven't done it. Um, but this should be able to handle all that just fine. Um, and it's probably the best ECU on the aftermarket you can get. Um, so I would definitely recommend this if you guys are looking into it. Um, and I would do it like I did with the um, wire it yourself because um, it's nice to be able to plug and play, um, but I don't like the old wiring, so I wouldn't do a plug and play with the original Nissan stuff, um, and then I wouldn't pay for somebody else to wire it for me, um, because I like doing it myself. Um, <laughs> but that is just me. You can pay an extra $200, I think, and you'll get a custom loom for yourself, which is nice, um, but I like the experience in being able to know that I did everything on my own, um, so there you go, guys. Drop any questions you have down below. I hope this was really helpful, um, and I will see you guys later.